Because this packet was, two of the pages were focused on the most recent information, which was permutations and combinations and probability with those. And then the second two pages was review of prior concepts. And that review, so the second two pages, is very much like what your test will look like. Some of these kind of problems will be on there as well. Uh, just not as many as what was on this packet. So, again, it's kind of a focus on permutation combination stuff with some review. Your test is Friday. We're going to talk about today. We're, we'll spend maybe half or so on this, maybe a little bit. And then talk about binomial probability. That's our last type of probability. And review on Wednesday and then test Friday. Okay? So you need to be on top of your notes. You need to make sure you're doing the work. Did you have test Friday? Test Friday. Okay. You need to make sure that if you're struggling, especially with this stuff, this permutation combination stuff, that you get in and ask for help this week. Again, it's not going to be a big part of the test, but it, it does make up some of the points. And so you need to, and because there are more work, they make up, like individually, they make up more points than some questions do. So you do need to know how to do it. I'll start by answering any questions that you want to ask first. And then at some point after we do that, we'll go check all the answers to the whole packet. But let's take questions anywhere in the packet first. Go over C on example six for um, combinations. Okay. What page number is that? Uh, it says. Well, just in the package. Um, ten or two. It's two. Okay. All right. So part C. Oh, you know what? Also, as part of this. I would like to give you some more notes on these to help you because these are the hardest problems that you'll come across. Probably, maybe even this whole semester. Just depends. We'll see. But they are pretty tough. That would be kind of cool, though, if you got the hardest problems done by February instead of down the road. I'll be curious to, to ask you that question at the end of the school year. Uh, anyway. So let's, I think, do the one that she's asking, which is C, and use that to get back into this stuff, and then go write some notes to kind of direct you, and hopefully provide you a little help with this. Um, so in terms of this one, the scenario is that you're grabbing six movies, for all four of these, you're grabbing six movies from this selection. So 30 zombie, 10 action, which is a total of 40 movies. And it's good to write down these things, highlight these things that I'm showing you. I'm not just doing it because it's instruction on the board, but this is how you should do it when you do it on your paper. So make sure you know what's going on before you start these problems, because it's easy to get on the wrong path, for sure. Okay. So... Basically, this is a choosing problem. And so, in fact, it even says that word here. So when you have a, a problem that is a choice, or choose a certain number out of a certain number, that's your, your clue that it's, it's permutation or combination probability. Okay. So when you realize that, your first goal is, is, does order matter here? Like, is it a combination or a permutation is really the question, right? So if you just grab movies off your shelf, does it matter the order that they're there? No. So that's a really important beginning because it steers you down the right path. So order does not matter. And just a reminder, that order doesn't just mean like first, second, third, fourth. Order also means if you switch something about the scenario, is it going to be different? 
Okay? So you could think of it in our class. If we arrange the seating chart differently, it has nothing to do with order that you're sitting in here, but would that be a different classroom then if I arranged you guys differently? Yeah, like you'd be sitting by somebody new, you'd have a different view of the board, etc. So that could be considered order matters. This one, I'm just holding movies. Who cares what order they're in? Okay, so we're still drawing six, exactly two zombie movies. Means how many action movies am I holding? Four. So we have to account for both of that, right? The zombie and the action. We have to account for both in our problem. Okay, here's the review part. So the probability in general, probability, and this is in the, I think it should be on the first page of your notes. Up here we wrote the number of desired outcomes. Now we're going to write it this way. Number of ways to choose. Choose desired. Again, it's a choice problem, and so we can't just count movies. That's not good enough. We have to do it differently. Again, on the bottom, it's number of total ways to choose. Before, for just basic probability, we just wrote total. Total outcomes or total possible outcomes. But now it's total ways to choose. We need to change the wording so that it directs us in the correct way. Okay. So, a couple things that we know now. Number one, we know a total of movies is 40. We're choosing six. Number two, we know it's choosing six, not just that we have six. Okay? So we need to ask for our denominator, which is where you should start. You don't have to, it's just my advice. How many ways can I choose six movies? So, in other words, this problem should boil down to this. Let me just write it over here. And honestly, what I'm about to write is the, that is the key to the whole problem. The calculation part is pretty easy because we're using calculators. So number of ways to choose six movies. So if you can identify those words I just wrote, then you're home free. Because that really points you to what to do to calculate it. It's really that, though. If you don't know what to write here, you probably won't know what to calculate. How about the numerator? How would we describe it? I'm not asking for a calculation yet. So remember, our desired really is describing what we're looking for. So in this one, what would we write as a description in the numerator? Ways to choose two zombie movies. And? And four action. Okay, so that word and will translate into a calculation in a second. So yeah, good job. So our numerator is number of ways to choose two zombie and is a huge word in probability. That's a really big deal. So we can't just gloss over it um, in terms of calculations. We can't. And for action. And that's what we're calculating in the numerator. So ways to choose choose, there we go, two zombie and four action. So again, let's start with the denominator. How do we calculate how many ways to choose six out of 40, if order doesn't matter? Yeah, it's NCR, in this case, 40, C, six. So we have 40 to choose from. The C isn't standing for choose, it's standing for combination, uh, but we choose six, so 40 choose six in the combination. All right, numerator. How many ways can we choose two zombie movies? <coughs> 30 choose two, perfect. So 30, let's not write that big. 30 choose two. 
And then also we have to do the same with the action. So how many ways can we choose for action? 10, choose 4. Good. 10, choose 4. All right. The top, the 40 is the total, the 30 is the zombie, and the 10 is the action. Yeah. Is it like, um, like additional? Like, would you like add them at the end? Okay, so that was what I was about to say. Good job. This and right here, I, I highlighted it because it tells us to multiply these. Oh. Yeah. So multiply the two numbers you get on the numerator. Okay, so this is getting a little bit crowded. Well, what do we do from here? All the hard work is done at this point. We just have to use the calculator. Again, the key to this whole problem was this was knowing how to articulate, like to be able to say what your denominator is and your numerator. Because once we get to here, we just go type stuff in the calculator. Would you then, like, for your answer, answer, would you just keep it as a fraction, or would you divide it? Um, it depends if it says, like, give your answer as a percent, or round to the nearest blank, you know. This one, the fraction, is kind of ugly. So it would be better, it would be more meaningful if we turn it to a percent. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go do the 40, choose 6. Remember, you, on most of these, you have to hit the 40 first. Math, probability, so arrow to PRB. And we're doing number 3. So number 3, choose 6. And there's our denominator. So 3, 8, 3, 8, 3, 8. And then the numerator, we're going to go 30, math, probability, 3, choose 2. And 10, math, probability, number 3, choose 4. And we want to multiply those. So we have those two numbers. Grab it, hit times, go grab the other one. Or you can just type it, it's fine. And we get 91,350. So again, like this, Chloe was saying, should we reduce that or, but it's very meaningless this way, right? It's just too big a numbers. We don't really understand the percentage. So I would prefer you to go divide. And let me show you on this one. I'll just go grab this number and hit divided by, and then arrow up to that number, grab it, and hit enter so that you don't, mess up typing the number in. So 20, well, not 20, but how do we go from this decimal to a percent? Twice to the right. So 1, 2, our decimal will sit right there in between the 2 and the 3, which if we round, we need to round that 3 to a 4. So we have a 2.4% chance of that specific situation. Guys, that's a, there's a lot going on there, right? But it really comes down to knowing how to word your two, your numerator, and your denominator. So, you want to do another one of those on that page at all? Or? A. A? Okay. And then what was yours? Okay, so let's do A. We'll be able to do it a little faster, and then... We'll go do which one? B. Okay, and then B down below. Okay, so on A, it's the same denominator. Because we're still picking six movies from the same set of possible movies. So it's still 40, choose six. And we know that that's... 
and then our, our numerator this time, how about we try to articulate what it's asking? How do we articulate what it wants in the numerator? Yeah, dude. What's the way all six movies on e grab are zombie movies? Okay, good. So how do you choose six movies that are all zombie? Let's choose Yes, but you said it backwards. So it will be 30, choose six. Okay? Guys, um, in this, just as a reminder, the second number is how many you choose, so it can never be bigger than the first number because that would be like saying pick 30 movies out of six, and that is impossible. So second number is smaller. Uh, this one, so 30 choose six. 30 math probability number three choose six is that number. And percentage-wise, you can hit divide and go find that other one. Hold on one sec. So 15.5% there. Okay, what did you ask? Yeah, it's the same for all of these, all the first four. Good. Yep, so this one, the same thing, 40, choose six. That's the total ways we can choose six movies. But this time we're choosing action, so it's 10, choose six. And that probability is pretty small, because the ways you can choose six out of 10 is pretty small. And then this one, Bottom right, same denominator, so 40, choose 6. We're still cho choosing 6 out of the total 40. Uh, but this is another exactly one, so we need to do 4 and 2. So it will be 10, sorry, not 10, 30. 30, choose 4. 30, choose 4 times 10, choose 2. So those two still add up to 6. Is that making more sense? Okay, let's go do B on the bottom one. I think before we do that one, just because I don't, I think we're on a good roll here. Let's just set up part C, and then we'll come back to that. This part B is kind of weird. It's different. There's not going to be probability like that on your test, so. Let's do exactly two kings for more practice like that. So let's talk about our denominator. Number of ways to what? This is a standard 52 card deck and we are, it says, being dealt a five card hand. Good. Yep. Number of ways to choose five cards out of, if you need to write that, out of 52. Okay, with that, what would I write for my denominator? Now we're ready to write the calculation step. Number of ways to choose five cards out of 52 or from 52. Emma. Yeah, what did you say in the middle? 52 what, 5? Oh, not divided by. Because it's ways to choose. How do we choose stuff? C or P, right? Does order matter here? No, it doesn't. So, good, 52, choose 5. All right, numerator. How should we describe the numerator? Think back to the to C and D on those first two. Number of ways to what? Choose, yeah. 
that choose word is important. Two kings. And why do we have to say and? Because we're also getting three other cards. Yeah, good. So, and three what? What would you say there? Do we care what those are? No. So I'm just going to say three not kings, I guess. So, how do we pick... How do we write the calculation for picking three, uh, sorry, two kings? How many kings are in a deck? There are four. So four choose two. Four choose two, yep. Again, it says and, so we're going to multiply. So for the kings, it's four choose two. There's only four cards. How about for the rest of the cards? 48 choose 3. Yeah, good. That kind of accounts for the rest of what's going on. Okay, and some of these numbers are pretty big, like the 52 choose 5. I just can't remember, so I want to check. Yeah, it's, a, it's like our 383 three one. It's pretty big. So let's go ahead and do the rest of it. Four, choose two, and 48, choose, what was it, three? Okay, so we're going to multiply those second two numbers and multiply the six and the 17 and divide it by that one. And there we go. So what percent is that? Yeah, if we, this one would be a good one to round. So like just 4%. So if you're playing cards, you have a 4% chance of getting two keys. You guys ever play the game, the card game Golf? It's pretty fun. You try to get the least points, and kings are worth zero, which is, which is the best, of course. But um, you don't have too big of a chance of getting two kings in your hand. So let's, on part B, all twos are all threes. We're going to do this slightly differently. So all twos. Here's how that would go. We start with 52 cards. How, what chance is that first card when we pull it to be a two? <coughs> so four out of 52. Okay. Yeah. Right? Four out of 52 chance. That's the first card. Keep it. What's the chance of drawing a two on the next card? Good, 3 out of 51, and on now. So 2 out of 50, and then the last one is 1 out of 49. Okay? So when we multiply all that stuff together, that's the probability of all 2s. Is it different for the 3s? No. No, those same numbers are the same exact same numbers for the 3s. So all 3s is the same. And it doesn't say and in the parentheses. It doesn't say all twos and all threes. Um, it says or. So what do you do when you have or probability? What's your first question? This is a review question. Are they mutually exclusive? Are they mutually exclusive? So can you be a two and a three at the same time? No. no. So since they're, they are mutually exclusive, we can just add these up. And it's very small. Uh, all we, we really we just need so twelve twenty four out of whatever our denominator is. By fifty four times fifty three times fifty two. What? What am I doing? Sorry about that. Fifty four 
52 times 51 times 50 times 49. Yeah, so a huge number. And then 24 was our numerator. So that's our probability. That Remember, that means move the decimal point three, uh, six places to the left. So I will show you what that number looks like. If we do it as a percentage, it would only be moving it four places to the left. So 3.71234. So each of these has a 0 .00037 chance of happening. So if we double that, it's 0 .00074%. So are you likely to get all twos? Yeah, I'm probably not betting on that, right? Okay, so that one was kind of different. I don't want you to focus in too much on that. The rest of these are more like what you'll see. Uh, let's do some notes on this kind of probability, because I feel like you haven't gotten some direction on that as much. You have your combinations, permutations notes, but we're going to write about how to find probability. So again, to emphasize, we change this to say number of ways to choose, total ways to choose, which should push you to NPR or NCR. If order matters, choose the P. If it says exactly or implies some other way, implies and, maybe it will even say and, then you need to multiply those NPRs or NCRs in the numerator, like we have done. Advice is to start with the total, just to help define um, describing what you need to calculate. Okay. Questions on those notes at all? I'm going to give you a second to get them, and then we'll take more questions on the packet. B and C on the practice test. Okay, so practice test. Which page of that? This, this one? With the sleep and the honor roll or something? Okay, so she asked about B and C. Guys, one quick reminder, the back table does not have totals. You would want to start there. If you're given one of these tables with no totals, start with the totals and make sure they add up both directions. So you should add horizontally and vertically to that same corner. So just a reminder, this one already has that, so you're good. And she's asking about B and C. So are being on the honor roll and getting the recommended eight hours of sleep independent events? And then explain. So this is basically a test for independence, which we wrote about in our notes. Not sure why that's there. There it is. So for me, it was a couple pages back. Uh, there. So test for independence. Either one of these is a test. You don't have to do both. So pick what A and B are. Like define one as A and one as B is what I mean. And then go see if this statement is true. So in this, again, it doesn't, they told us A and B, but for a test for independence, it's not critical. Which one is which? So let's write out one of these. And I'm putting a question mark because we don't know if this is true. Can you get that door, please? We don't know if it's true. We're going to see if it's true. And if it is, then it is independent. And if it's not, then not. That's all we really need to do. So honor roll and getting recommended sleep. In this problem, it tells you, just right at the beginning, that honor roll is A and sleep is B. For our test, it doesn't totally matter. 
but let's be consistent with the problem. So A is honor roll and B is the sleep. So guys, basically, if we translate our formula, if you want to call it that, into this problem, it would say, is the probability of being on the honor roll knowing that the person gets the right amount of sleep the same as the probability of being on the honor roll if we don't know they get the right amount of sleep? That's what the question's actually asking. What do you think? Yeah. Do you think sleep, just in your own opinion, not based on the problem, but let's bring it home, do you think getting the right amount of sleep impacts being on the honor roll? Yes. I would say probably. I would say they're probably not independent, right? Now, we're going to go see if that's true. It's like all of these groups in it. Eight hours helps you retain memories and stuff in the class. Okay, so she's saying eight hours of sleep helps you retain memory. So, based on our data, the probability of being on the honor roll, remember this line says, given that, given that they get the recommended sleep. Let's go see what that is. So, that tells us to look here and this number. So, given that they get the right amount of sleep, how many are on the honor roll? Well, that would be 60. So 60 out of 94 is this first one. Again, we're still trying to figure out if, this, if these are equal. So we need to kind of put a question mark. All right, the probability of being on the honor roll, this doesn't have the line. So this one is just total honor roll out of total students. That's the probability of honor roll. It has nothing to do with knowing the sleep situation. So that's 132 out of 468. Can we compare these like this? Not very well. So what should we do? Turn them into percent. Yeah. We can, in fact, just turn them into decimals. So 60 divided by 94 is 0.638. And then 132 out of 468 is 0.282. Now we know. Are they independent? They're not equal, so not independent. And we didn't expect them to be. Like you would definitely expect sleep to impact your your honor roll status in the long run, maybe not one night, but overall. But this isn't an opinion, this is based on data, right? If you get a question, actually, when you get a question like this on your test, do not give me your opinion. I don't want it. You need to base it on fact from the data, okay? Just like we did here. Okay, what else? Brendan, was there another? C. Also C, okay. So basically the same idea here, only we're asking mutually exclusive instead of independent. Well, what does mutually exclusive mean? That's independent. Affecting each other, that's independent. It's okay. It's good to get us there. Can't be the same thing at the same time. Okay? Well, I think that should be obvious now because I already circled one. Well, not one. I circled 60 people that are the same thing at the same time. Right? They are both getting the recommended sleep and on the honor roll. So vertical and horizontal. So you can be both at the same time. Cool. This is a good review. Anything else before we just check and move on? Okay, 
So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to create a temporary post on Google Classroom with the key to this whole packet, and I want you to take five to ten minutes to check it. Okay? So you'll need to pull up the key. I haven't posted it. I'm about to. Okay. By now, you've heard that word in algebra before. And what does it mean in that situation? Okay, that's okay. Because but you should have your phones and computer put away. So your binomial probability is this. We know bi means two. In this case, we're going to use that two to describe two different cases, which we're going to call success or failure. That's it. We're, we're going to identify one of our outcomes as a success and whatever's left over as failure. And so if you can narrow down probability situations as it either happens or it doesn't happen, binomial probability is your tool. And it has kind of a nasty looking formula, but it's actually not as bad as it looks, that we'll use to, to calculate this. The problem is, not problem, but the, the caution is that you have to meet these three criteria in order to use this. Which, I'm not saying, it happens a lot. Like, I'm not saying that this is rare. So, each, whatever we're talking about, each quote, trial, has to have either a success or a failure. We, we need to be able to delineate between them. Okay? Each one of those has to be independent. So let's underline important words. And then the probability of success in each case has to be the same. So let's throw out an example of where this might be true. I was going to use you for that one. <laughs> All right, let's say, what's the probability? Let me write that better. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let's think of an easy one first. The probability of a red card from a deck. I know. Now we have to say this in my example. Why why do I need to say with replacement? Which of those criteria would get violated if we don't say with replacement? Yeah, that would if I drew a card that changes the probability of the next card. So if I don't put it back it's it's not okay. Okay, so probability of drawing a red card. If I put the card back each time, it's always the same. It's always for, or a 13 out of 52 or 1 out of 4. And so our success would be a red card, and failure would be any other card. Okay? Actually, I said it was 4 out of 52. It's actually, or 1 out of 4. It's actually 50%. Sorry, half the deck is red. As long as we replace. If I didn't put that part, this couldn't be a binomial probability because the probability changes with each card I draw. Then we would have to go pick with C's and P's and those kind of things. Okay? All right, let's look at some more. I'm going to go through a series of is this binomial or not just to get your, kind of get you understanding what it looks like. So it says this spinner, and I know it's kind of hard to read, but um, it says assume that the spinner is equally likely to stop in any of the, of the sections. So back to it. It's spun three times. Success is landing on a section marked go forward. So is this binomial or not? Well, again... I'll show you these. Each trial has a possible outcome delineated as success. The results are independent. It's like, does one spin change the next spin? 
Nope, it's independent. Does the probability of success change with each spin, or is it the same? It's the same. So this is a binomial. Success or not success. And so we can simplify this process by doing the binomial formula. Okay, let's do another one. In a class of 23, that's about this size right now, maybe a little smaller, seven students completed the term project. Two are chosen at random, so I just picked two of you. Success is that I pick you and you've completed the project. So is that binomial? You know what? I think let's go write the let's go write down the three conditions so you can reference them as we do this. That way you don't have to try to remember them right now. At least for this part, you can look at it. I'm trying to title these, subtitle these different kinds of formulas we're using so you know when to use them. Because on the test, I'm not going to tell you. It's just going to be, here's a problem. Which probability do you need to solve it with? So it's, it's really important to be able to identify that. Okay, so the conditions to use this are three. One. We need a set number of, and put in quotes, trials. So just now I showed you the spinner and it said three spins. Then the student's problem said pick two. Okay, so set number of trials. Each with an outcome called success. Next. Each trial probability must be independent. Probably underline that word, also the word success, if we want to call it the keywords. And then finally, probability of success. Never changes. So keep that list handy, because now you have it to read as I ask you whether things are binomial or not. Just as a reminder, at this point, we've talked about or, so mutually exclusive or not probability. We've talked about and probability, which is where we had independent. We've talked about conditional probability with the line, where it said given that we know which also allowed us to test for independence. We've talked about combinatorics probability, and now binomial. So lots to distinguish between as you get into this uh, study week. So back to this. 
23 students, 7 completed the term paper. So we have this probability for any given student having completed the term project. And I pick 2. So is this binomial? I pick 2, so that meets the first condition. I designated success as one of them having done the project. So yes, the first one is met. Next one, does her doing the project affect him doing the project? No, so that's independent. And then number three, if I pick a student, how does that affect the probability of success? Does it change it or leave it the same? Um, well, since those students are going to present, I'm not going to present again the probability Good job. It changes, right? Because it's not like people are going to present twice. That was well said. Good job, Manuel. So no, this is not because that last condition wasn't met. Uh, why don't you talk to somebody next to you about these two? All right, give me a thumbs up or down on the first one. First one. All right, so no. And the key phrase is this one. That remains. So that means we're not putting cards back, so the probability will change each time. How about the second one? Give me a thumbs up or down. Yeah, this one is. It's good. Okay, so I think you have the feel for it. This question also said, if so, find the probability. For that, you need the formula. So let's go write it down. So probability of success this is gonna look kind of ugly at first but it's not as bad once we talk through it so we start off with the combination multiplying that by and I need to tell you what all these letters mean Once you know, it's not too bad. If you can identify something as binomial, I promise you'll like it because you can just plug stuff in here and hit enter in your calculator, okay? I promise it's gonna be okay. It's better than it's better than what we did before. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, let's go define what each letter means so you know. N, that's the number of trials. Let's put trials in quotes. So like on the kid one, the student one, I was picking two. So that was a trial number of two. On the spinner, it said spin three times. So you know that the n is 3. Okay? R is the number of successes that you're trying to get. That P over on the right, that's the probability. of success as a decimal. Okay? So with that, you can just plug stuff in, right? Let's go do one once everybody has this. All right, so do you have a preference which one we do? How about the bottom one, I guess, unless you're opposed, but. So it says you roll a number cube four times. Assume that each time you roll the number cube, each number is equally likely, so that's a pretty safe assumption. 
for each row, success is getting an even number. Okay? So we've defined we've defined how many four times. We know the probability is the same each time and it's independent. So we meet the conditions. We do need to specify this problem doesn't, but how many successes we want. So pick a number. It, it, like up to four. Two. All right, so probability of two successes. So guys, here's how it works. I'll write the, the equation again. I'm going to run out of room. So what's N? N. Trial. It's trial. So four, and we want two successes. In this case, you just said two. Okay, times, what's the probability of success? It says rolling an even number on it. Just think of a regular die. What's the probability of that? It's 3 out of 6 or 0.5, right? So 0.5 to the R. So we want to get 0.5 twice. So squared. All right? Well, this one's kind of weird because 1 minus P is the same. So 1 minus 0.5 is what? Also 0.5 to the total minus how many successes we want, which is 2. So 4 minus 2. So we go plug that in our calculator. And you can plug it, if you're careful, you can plug the whole thing in at once. Like so. 4 math probability, 3. So 4 trials, 2 successes times... The probability of success, in this case we want it twice, so squared, times the probability of failure, in this one it's also 0.5, and also 2, because we chose such even numbers. And so that's going to be 0.375, which is what percent? Okay, let's do one more. Let's just do this top one. So this grocery store is giving away scratch-off cards with the purchase of more than $100. So some kind of winning card. Terrell has five. What's the probability that he has exactly three winning cards? if each one has a 30% probability to win. So do you hear all the numbers involved? I hear a total, a, how many we hope to win, a probability, and I hear the conditions being met. Do you guys hear all that? Let's, let's make sure. Is one card, so each card is one card to the next dependent or independent? It's independent, right? If this one wins, that one may not, it doesn't matter. Each card has the same probability, so no worries there. So we go through probability of three wins is five, choose three or five, win three times, times the probability of winning three times, so 0.3 to the third, times the probability of losing each card, which would be 0.7, 1 minus 0.3, twice. So let's read it again. How many ways can we, um, how many ways can we win three times out of five times the probability of winning three times times the probability of losing two times? Punch it in. So what's the big deal here? It's identifying if it's binomial. And I'm going to give you some practice to help you with that. Okay?